Hello friends, welcome back to my channel on Feral's Mad World and this is Feral. So today I'm at this place called Sabahar and it's a wonderful place and it makes handmade textile fabrics. So come, let's see. So friends, before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell button. Do that now. Hi, uh, my name is Kathy Marshall. I'm the founder and general manager of Sabahar. So welcome. It's so fun that you're getting to see all about our company. Uh, Sabahar is about 16 years old. Uh, we started with one weaver and five women in our house. And now we have nearly 100 people. And it's been a blessed journey with amazing people, with amazing textiles in an amazing country. And you are all welcome to come and see us and now we are going to meet the International Marketing Assistant, Ms. Samra with Casa. So now let's see her, what she has to say. Hi everyone, uh, I am Samra with Casa. Uh, I work in Sabahar as an International Marketing Assistant. Um, so today I'm going to show you the process of the Eri Silk. So Eri Silk is the most commonly found in Ethiopia. And since we have two different kind of uh, silks, the Erie and Mulberry, but in Ethiopia most of the time we have the Erie silk. So as you can see, we have all the life cycle of the silkworms, whole life cycle of Erie silk. So we have the egg of the Erie silk and it takes only 10 days to hatch, but sometimes it might take more days because of the, depending on the weather. So after the egg hatch, they turn into a larva, which is the worm, the infant ones, and they start to eat custard leaf. Custard leaf is mostly found in, in Ethiopia. You can find it everywhere, but you have to wash it and they need it more hygienic way. And after they feed, they become more bigger worms like this. And when the thing that we know that they are ready to make the silk is they start to crawl all over the place and they eat and they eat more and the color change into more yellowish so we put them in small different boxes and they spin like 2000 times in there after they spin they make a cocoon so this is the cocoon so this is the silk part so what we do is we dry this one on the sun and we boil it and then it change into a beautiful soft silk but for the life cycle, what we do is we keep this one and they will try to escape from here and they change into a butterfly or a moth because they don't fly that much. So as I mentioned to you, all of their life cycle is 45 up to 50, 55 days. And this is how we make Aerosilk. Thank you so much. These are the real worms. You can see they are moving. Oh. <laughs> oh, how beautiful they look. This is the box. So this is the box where they spin. So this is the box where they put the cocoon and then the worms spin inside this box 200 times. 2000 times and then they form silk. And as you can see, this is the cocoon. And see the voice. It's still inside. Whoa. Is it alive? Yeah, it's still alive. Wow. Can you believe this is a cocoon and it has a life, uh, life inside? As you can see. Can you hear this? The sh 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 voice. So it's still alive. Amazing. So she just showed us that how silk is made from the silkworm, the airy worms. And now we will go to the spinning room and um, we'll see that how it is spun. So this is the spinning room and uh, this is the room where they spin the yarns. This is our spinning department. So. 
We have like spinners in here, uh, but currently because of the corona, we try to do like a, a distance between our employees. So we have uh, Yimeng in here. So she's doing a spinning of the cottons. So spinning used to do in, uh, in Ethiopia by the spin drop spindles in the past, but that's more time consuming. So we change it into a spinning wheel. So they are doing a spinning of cottons. And here we spin silk and cottons. So um, we have about 26, more than 26 uh, spinners. They do the spinning outside of the Sabahar. They do it at their home and they bring the raw material to us at the end of the week. So we just saw that how uh, the yarn is spun and now we'll go to the dyeing department and see how the yarn is dyed. So this is the place where they dye the yarn and as she said that there are two types of dye which they use, the natural dye and the chemical one. The natural dye is used from the Sabahar garden, uh, from the flowers, from the turmeric and other things and the chemical dye is one where they use chemical for the dyeing. So he is in charge of dyeing and today he would be showing us about the coffee dye. So for dyeing, hot boiling water is used and around 60 gram of coffee powder is used for one shawl. So since uh, this is a dark fabric, it's more on a, on a blacker side fabric, it turns into beige. But if it is a white fabric or a lighter shade fabric, it, it will turn into brown. Now he is filtering the coffee and after the coffee is being filtered, the filter is used as compost. So at the dyeing room, we saw that how they have they they dye the yarn uh, fabric um, with the natural colors. They also use avocado. They use onion peels uh, for dyeing, which is amazing. Uh, today we did not get chance to see other dyeing, but maybe next time. But uh, this is amazing that at Sabahar they don't waste anything. They use everything. They recycle it. So after the fabric is dried, it is kept in the sun for drying, as you can see. This all are kept for drying in the sun and they are the chemical dyes. So this is the uh, weaving room and as you can see, the workers are weaving. This uh, room is a bit noisy because um, it's a weaving room and it has to be noisy because all the machines are working at the same time and this looks amazing it is a skill craft If I get the chance, I would be yeah, trying my hands on how it is woven and so I'm waiting for him to show me how to do it. So I was trying my hands on how to do it. I couldn't do it much because it requires lots of skills, but I enjoyed doing it anyways. So after the fabric is dyed and weaved, uh, it uh, yeah, goes for fringing. And after fringing, the fabric is washed. After the fabric is for washed, uh, the fabric goes to the quality control room. Uh, and it is also called finishing room. And so I'll show you how it is done. 
But the demand for high quality is uh, there and it's, it's okay, it's good for us. So I like the challenge that we have of keeping all our products uh, very professional, very perfect, uh, perfect, almost perfect. So basically this is the finishing room where the women look at the fabric for any defects and then they create according uh, to the fabric in A, B and C and, uh, and then they finally see the product and if it is approved they keep it aside. We are in this room called the export room and basically in this room she is sewing the labels. So as you can see, these are the silk fabrics, which some of them are from the natural dye and some of them are used as a chemical dye. And this is how the export room looks. It's a huge room, it's a big room. Okay, so you know, anything handmade uh, is a miracle when it actually reaches the, the home of people because it's so much work. So one of the big challenges for us at Sabahar is uh, keeping our quality high because we have a global clientele and we have an amazing customer base globally actually and it's growing. Sabahar exports its fabric to 17 different countries like Canada, uh, USA, Australia, Japan, South Africa and so on. This is how it's packed for the different shipment. and um, a product that it will be very proud of. When you think that one scarf is maybe touched by eight, nine people in the production chain, from silk production, to spinning, to dyeing, to weaving, to washing, to labeling, um, that's an amazing opportunity to create employment, but it's also an amazing opportunity for there to be a mistake. So we take quality control really serious and um, when I compare us to 10, 15 years ago, our quality now is so much better and we're still getting better. So as I have seen in Sabahar, there are different rooms, like there is uh, the spinning room, the weaving room, the dyeing room, fringing room, the room where the product uh, is yeah, assessed for the finishing, uh, finishing things and then it is taken to the export room. And now we are at the shop. It's the Sabahar shop. So the shop has all beautiful product. It has uh, long scarves, shawls and other things. So I'm gonna try something from this shop. And if I like it, I'm gonna buy it. And we'll put on a loom that has more um, ability to make intricate designs. So, very proud. This is beautiful. And finally, men will can come in and we can say, we have something for you. Because the men come in and say, you don't have anything for us. <laughs> so yeah, they're very beautiful.